Bibliosophie. Really into the spirits. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure if I have the capacity to sit and talk, quite honestly. Hello, hello, it's Sunday evening. I'm no longer grumpy, but I am flattened. Sundays are really long work days for me. They start off earlier than most of my other mornings because I have a morning gig every week. Uh, so that really just sets me up for failure <laughs> for the rest of the day. And I often will have other gigs or rehearsals in the afternoon. That was the case today. I had a rehearsal afterwards. And then I had a meeting that finished just recently. So a lot of stuff to do. This is going to be a busy week. I have a lot of music to work on. I have a gig on Friday in addition to my usual weekly gig and I have also a recording uh, on Sunday so next Sunday is going to be a very long day as well. I'm working on an application that's due at the beginning of February. Um, it's actually it's completely done but I do have to send it in and yeah just a lot of both music and writing work to do. What's on the docket reading wise? I decided that I should finish Of Woman Born by Audrey Rich by the end of the month because why not? I read about half of it at the beginning of the month and I talked about it in a previous vlog and um, I figured I should wrap it up for this uh, month if I can. I, re I resumed reading uh, some of it yesterday morning and that was actually a really good way to start my morning. It also is a very good companion piece to the novel that I started on Friday evening, Friday night, uh, Is Mother Dead by Vigdis Hjort, uh, translated into English by Charlotte Barslund. Uh, this has been on my radar for a while. I actually had it out from the library in autumn of 2023. I never got around to it, so I'm finally reading it now. I've read a little bit more than half of it at this point and I'm really enjoying it. I'm also really cringing through it. Now I have gotten into its rhythm more so it's not as painful but it is it's hard to deal with. What do I mean by that? Why am I cringing? Because it sets up a family dynamic that is so goddamn uncomfortable. We are following a middle-aged or kind of later middle-aged artist who has left her uh, country, her family behind because they didn't approve of her choice, choices in life, basically. Uh, who she ended up marrying, what she was doing and becoming an artist, the kinds of things that she wanted to paint. Now that she is recently widowed, she moves back to Norway and is now again in proximity of her mother and her sister, both of whom she's completely estranged from. And we get her, the story of her background, of her childhood, and also her currently trying to see her mother. Uh, and she begins basically stalking her mother, trying to get a glimpse of her. And it's really deeply uncomfortable. It's really deeply uncomfortable because it is, first of all, her childhood is, is just kind of low-grade cruel, in my opinion. Admittedly, we're getting only her side of the narrative, or it's from her perspective, but the things that her parents said and did to her made her feel are just so unjust. It's, it's just this like constant contempt for who she really is or wants to be that in my opinion is abusive. So it's, it's the kind of untheatrical, toxic, and again, I think basically abusive, um, childhood uh, 
situation that obviously is deeply wounding and then her relationship to her grown sister and to her aging mother is is also just deeply bleak um and i feel for her so much so again of course i'm biased towards her perspective because i'm hearing from her perspective and even the narrator i think is trying to show some ambivalence about the reasons for her mother's especially difficult actions and unfairness but uh, it just it gets my my hackles up basically immediately and it's also deeply uncomfortable because it's really fundamentally in my opinion about the inability to get people to love you on your terms uh and how difficult that is and there might end up being a moment where she has to come to terms with uh that or not i'm not sure i want to share one uh quote from the middle of the book which is i think very apropos my sister doesn't know what happens to the relationship between mother and daughter when the daughter doesn't want to live the life prescribed for her but to live her own life when the mother fights the daughter and the daughter fights her own fearful self the two of them tied together by pain and rage and it becomes a matter of intimacy not love and that really grips at me that that intertwined toxic intimacy that is so pugnacious and so fraught and so difficult or maybe impossible to unwind but that isn't love so i'm yeah i'm definitely in this and also having a hard time with it i'm glad i have a much better relationship to my mother than the relationship that i see in this book do you want one no, no, no. Thank you. Because there's a course that I can't breathe. I think so. It's rain snowing again. There's a big coming out. They say he's going too far. moments away from sunset so the sunlight is quite beautiful but also i'm going to lose it very soon we finally got some sun today which was much much needed because it has been unrelentingly gray all week which has been very very difficult for me on top of everything the week has been sort of battering me around so yes i could use some rest and recuperation and i'm not gonna get it for a while. Let's talk books. I feel really overwhelmed by not having sat down to talk about books earlier because now I feel like I have too much to talk about. All right, so I finished Is Mother Dead several days ago on Tuesday, so quite a few days ago. I really loved it, but also, as I already mentioned, it was quite uncomfortable and it continues to be uncomfortable. I really see myself in the narrator and understand her plight, understand her need for control, for closure. This really is about the tunnel, obsessive, circular thinking that you go into when you are desperate for closure. And I really, really understand that heartbreak. I've never gone to the lengths that she goes to, but I understand at least that inner turmoil. If you've read this book, I would love to hear your thoughts on how much do you trust of her account of things, of 
how she categorizes her childhood, her mother, if she's to be trusted, and then admitting even if she is to be trusted, do you also sympathize with her need for closure? Or do you think that she just needs to walk away? I think objectively she really does. However, I also probably would not be able to walk away. I'm not sure. Uh, so yeah, I would love your thoughts about the whole convoluted affair in the comments because I think I'm, I'm I think I'm uncomfortably close to our protagonist. I think I I think I get it too much maybe, um, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if everybody has automatically that sensation of, sure, of course, you have to keep digging, you have to keep digging, yes, you've been wronged, you have to keep digging, you have to figure out a way to make this right for yourself. Um, yeah, because this is, it's convoluted, and there's, I think there's no right, no one is in the right, really, in this book. I finished Of Woman Born a few days ago also, um, I have talked about this already in a previous vlog, so I don't know if I have that much more to add. Regarding how well it ages or not, um, I mean, largely I think it is worth reading, if not necessarily obligatory, if you've read other material that deals with radical feminism. As I've said in a previous vlog, she talks about kind of her blind spots, regarding race and class, and there are some, and she doesn't address all of them in her introduction to a later edition, but she does address some of them and how the landscape has or has not changed. In terms of gender, this is incon incontrovertibly, excuse me, binary in terms of its gender. It is not actually really about womanhood per se, it is about motherhood, so it definitely assumes that womanhood is having a uterus and having a relationship to motherhood. It is literally trans-exclusionary because it doesn't really make any sort of mention of anything beyond binary gender, but it also, just by virtue of making no mention of it, doesn't really step into any problematic places. So if you can just, you know, be okay, which you don't have to be, but if you can be okay with it excluding any vision of motherhood that isn't being born female, then it doesn't also go into other problematic areas. The, par not paragraph, excuse me, chapter on the relationship between mothers and daughters, as I've previously mentioned, does pair quite well with um, Is Mother Dead? So that was kind of a nice pairing of works. And I want to read a short quotation from Audrey Rich um, in that chapter, which I think goes really, really well with some of the things that um, the characters in Is Mother Dead are dealing with. As daughters, we need mothers who want their own freedom and ours. We need not to be the vessels of another woman's self-denial and frustration. And I think that is a lot of the things that Rich is talking about in terms of the experience of motherhood is what our protagonist in Is Mother Dead is reading into her mother's life. So that was very interesting. Uh, so if you want like a really, really short um, verdict on should you read A Woman Born? Yeah, it's worth reading and not absolutely obligatory. I think I think it is good with some caveats. Lost my light, then I dropped my phone. We're just, we're, we're struggling through this. I'm currently reading Martyr by Kave Akbar. This has been much hyped about and I really wanted to get my grubby little mitts on it. It came out officially uh, at the beginning of last week. And so I'm finally getting to, finally, I'm getting to it um, this week. Uh, Matthew Sharapa kindly sent it over to me along with 
Fazine. So this was some very lovely uh, book mail to get. I am happy to report that being about three quarters of the way through, I'm also loving it. Uh, this is definitely working its magic on me as well. It's a fast read and compelling read, sometimes funny, but also sometimes pretty devastating um, and inspiring, I would say. I think it's actually, if you are an artist, writer, it is an inspiring look into finding motivation and cr creativity. Uh, we are following a young poet uh, named Cyrus. He is originally born in Iran, but moved to the United States as a baby with his father. His mother was on a passenger plane that was shot down by U.S. forces. So that's kind of an originating martyrdom in Cyrus's life. Did I mention that our poet is named Cyrus? I can't remember. He is. Um, and now he is in some ways kind of alone in the world, but not, in, not exclusively and very much um, rootless. He is looking for direction in his life and he becomes really obsessed with wanting to write about martyrs and what makes a martyr? What is a meaningful death? What is a meaningless death? So this assembles an interesting cast of characters around him. We're mostly following his story in 2017, but not exclusively. Some of the passages of the book take place earlier and from different characters' points of view. So it makes for a really beautiful patchwork of perspectives and storylines. Again, some of them funny, some of them heartbreaking and difficult. It's a really beautiful book um, about, I think, finding a direction, finding a self, making that self, and exploring the meaning of life through facing death. Yes, let's say that. <laughs> Morning gig is done, off to record. So, I just got back home. It has been a very long day and I'm actually very satisfied with it, but I'm pretty spent. I technically have more work that I need to do today. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it. I have finished off three things this week, basically. So, huzzah, but I have next week to think about and I should practice for a rehearsal that I have early tomorrow morning. We'll see. Uh, I am almost done with Martyr. I have just about one uh, chapter left. What I forgot to talk about yesterday that I wanted to add is how important the concept of legacy is in this. And I think this goes with also the rootlessness that I was talking about yesterday. And by root, I mean both R-O-O-T and R-O-U-T-E. So the things which connect us to the earth, connect us to our surroundings and other organisms root, but also root as in pathway. And that is the kind of component of legacy. It is the past, it is what we inherit, but it is also the path that is partially created for us. And when we're thinking about our legacy, we're constantly thinking about both timelines at once, the things which came before us, our ancestors, what we have inherited, but also what we're going to give down, what we're going to create, what we're going to make of ourselves that remains after us. And so that's a crucial element of Martyr. And it's also, I think, what ties it to the other two books that I've been talking about this week, both um, Is Mother Dead and um, Of Woman Born, Legacy is this through line. So I leave you on this Sunday evening, beginning of Sunday evening, with legacy. And I'm going to have some pasta, which is now boiling over. See you.